You know, it's it's this. I'm really glad that uh, Fatima presented this case because all of us have gone to premature portrayals. I mean, we see a portrayal on a in a conference. That, I want one of those. And so we do a little bit of pressure for a couple of minutes and then we ask for a portrayal. And the problem is, is that feelings haven't, unconscious feelings haven't risen and resistance hasn't dropped enough in order for unconscious feelings to uh, come into awareness. And it's also important that when we're talking about portrayal, we're not inviting the patient to portray a conscious fantasy. I mean, any of us can think about, okay, let's think about how, I, how I'd kill my boss. Any of us can do that, right? Um, we can think of somebody who's been a real jerk. Uh, how would I beat the crap out of this jerk? I mean, any of us can do that. It, that's a visualization. And, and that's not what a portrayal is about. It's not about a conscious fantasy. What it is, is that we're pr pressing for feelings and a patient's feel, starting to feel feelings because they're getting anxious. And we keep addressing defenses so that feelings can rise. And we keep asking to make them rise. We keep addressing defenses. And what happens is at a certain point, an impulse comes up and that impulse you see is an unconscious impulse about unconscious feelings. So when we see that unconscious impulse, that means that formerly unconscious feelings and impulses are now in awareness because the fist came up or we saw fist form. So that's why we do that because that's why that if when we see that, that means in a highly resistant patient, those previously unconscious impulses are now conscious. And now we invite the patient to portray this previously unconscious impulse that now just became conscious. So that's very important. It's not just let's fantasize about your boss. It's like we're, we're trying to access unconscious feelings. And the, and, the, and the signs of the rise are that a patient's starting to feel anxious in the body and they don't know what they feel, eventually they can label a feeling and then they're starting to feel heat in the body and we keep asking, we keep doing the defense work and then and then they start feeling other things in their body and then you, you just kind of notice their hands and maybe the hands go like this, right? Like they want to strangle someone. Maybe there's an, or, or a patient just kind of goes like this. And at that moment, the unconscious impulse is not conscious and then you invite them to portray that unconscious impulse. So this is very important because then if you know what, why we're doing it, that is the portrayal of a previously unconscious set of feelings, a previously unconscious fantasy that's not conscious. Yes, that's what Dablu meant by, ah, at that moment, the unconscious is available. Now that's an isolation of affect. Of course, when we work with fragile patients or we work with um, patients in repression, their um, affect tolerance is much lower. So with some of them, you might not, you might not, they might not be able to tolerate an impulse yet, but they'll be, you'll just keep asking about the feelings and then they'll just say, I, I, I just see a dead body or I, I just, I, I just, I don't know. I, I just, I, I just saw the sword go through his head, right? There will be a flash of an image in their mind and for them, that might be the portrayal, that the murder happens just like that. And then they'll immediately go to guilt. So you might not even have to press for portrayal. You just keep asking how to experience it. And all of a sudden, an image flashes into the mind of the fragile patient. And that's their portrayal. And they're feeling guilt. Or they they may have a flash. It's like I'd want to hit them. And you say, well, of course, you would never do it in reality. But what would that look like in your imagination? And you might visualize a fantasy for the fragile patient, which builds his capacity initially until he can tolerate a greater access to his unconscious. With someone in repression, same thing. Images will come to mind. Uh, images come to mind, they'll feel guilt right away. It'll happen in a flash. So they won't even be able to portray the whole portrayal. There'll just be an image of someone getting killed. They might just see a dead body in the ground and, and the guilt is right away. That, that might be what they could tolerate. With someone in repression, by the time they can actually tolerate the experience of an impulse, at that point, this is a patient who probably is no longer going to be suicidal because now they can tolerate the rage outwardly and they have the affect tolerance. They can actually tolerate the experience of their impulse. So it's to remember that when we look at the spectrum of patients, whether it's from fragile repression to highly resistant, there's a spectrum of affect tolerance. And so that's going to affect what kind of portrayals uh, patients are able to have. This patient is clearly in isolation of affect in the session. And so as a result, Fatima 
can do a much longer phase of pressure and defense work. The other thing here is we often think I need to get the portrayal. Like we, we, we tend to idealize that unlocking and conscious, failing to realize that we're really causing multidimensional change. We're building patient affect tolerance, right? We're helping them see and let go of the defenses that cause their presenting problems. Let's suppose you got some really cool breakthrough. If you haven't done the defense work, those defenses are still going to create symptoms during the week. So it's important not to idealize that rather and instead realize you're doing many things. And all these things are very important. And this kind of defense work is absolutely essential because the patient has to see the defense is creating their difficulties. For instance, the way she looks at the ceiling, detaches, um, says words, but without feeling this way, she has a very detached, unengaged way of relating. That's causing her relational problems in life. That would defeat her dating life. It would end any marriage. It would keep her perpetually lonely. So those defenses, you see, are absolutely essential to address in order to ensure long-term character change. Because remember, character change is changing these character defenses, these repetitive defenses. So it's very important not to just idealize feeling. You have to remember, you have also have to systematically address the defenses. And in this case, systematically defend uh, address these resistances to emotional closeness that that would prevent her from having uh, good good relationships so end of a little mini sermon um yeah other yeah. questions responses i'd like to ask something about defenses 